G'day guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. Now, this is actually part of a double upload weekend, I imagine, because we did so well on the earlier video. So, if we could get 400 likes on the video anyway, that would be bloody fantastic, and I really hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Now, let's get into some highlights of the games that we've played this month. It's been a bit dicey, but for the most part, I think we've done okay, and you'll see why in a sec. Anyway, enjoy some highlights, and I'll join you guys for the Leeds game throw to Kovaric. Can he flip it around the corner? He can go to Fabio on the edge of the box again. Will he bring it down? Goes for Kovaric. This is a lovely play. Can he pull it back across? Saville blocked. Fuller. No, it's Byrne, I think. Johnny Byrne. West Ham are trailing here. Wimbledon 1, West Ham 0. Barry Fuller. Abdi. Oh, God. There's so much space for Clough, and it's a goal. We've been so good today, and we've just thrown it all away. It's really shocking, frankly. We've been so... Ah. Oh, come on. That must be offside. Surely that is offside. Well, there we go. We're not playing an offside trap anymore. And that looked offside to me. And I don't know how we've managed to turn this around into a defeat, frankly. Really disappointing. There you go. 2-1. Uh, not really sure how we've managed to lose that, but there you go. Sermon. Yeah, Hansen's through. That's a goal. Because once again, the goalkeeper moves out of position to make sure the goal goes in. Sunderland 1, Wimbledon nil. <clears throat> so much space for Arjo. This is going to be a goal again. Oh, great tackles. Come back to Johansson anyway. And that is 2-0 to Sunderland. Damn it. Kovarik with the ball whipped in. So much space for George Frankham. Can he score? He must do, and he does. There we go. Back in the game. And deservedly so, I'd have to say. Frankham's first goal of the season. Long. Hadji. This is going to be a simple goal. Once again, uh, Johansson's through. Burns tackled him. Oh, Johansson is such a good striker. 3-1 Sunderland. Very disappointing, actually. We've been okay today. And still, the defeat. A bit through, maybe. Goes back out wide for Kovarik. There's still a few minutes left here if we can find a goal. Kovarik whips it all the way through, and it's gone in anyway, off of Shalabar, I think. 3-2, we're back in it, sort of. Well, there we go. Whilst the 3-2 defeat isn't the worst in the world, maybe on another day we could have had something. Anderson, Kinsella. He's put it in, though. Wimbledon 1, Norwich City 0. A thoroughly deserved start of this game. Lewis Kinsella with the goal, of all things. But there you go. That's the win that probably saves us. Bamford steps up, and Norwich are level. What a joke. It was nowhere near the box. Ah, uh, 1-1. One, one. Slips it over the top for Lyle Taylor. He might just get there. He does, in fact. Fabio! And it's apparently gone over the line. I didn't look like it did to me, but there we go. Wimbledon 2, Norwich City 1. Fabio finally ends his goal drought. We're back in front, deservedly so. There we go. Wimbledon 2, Norwich 1. A great deserved win. Right, guys, we're back. And as you can see, we are 15th in the league. So, you know, yes, we're bottom half. Yes, we're not exactly doing fantastically. But the point is we are still 8 points above the drop zone. We're, well, we've got 9 games to go. The other teams mostly around us. In fact, all the teams below us all have uh, 8 games to go. So we've got that game in hand. And if we can win that game in hand, and I don't think that's today, um, then we will move ourselves nice and clear. And I think we'll be fine. We're still sort of jostling around that mid-table point. The fact is we're still closer to the playoffs than we are to the relegation zone uh, in a weird turn of events. But there you go. So it's been an interesting month against, like, oh, I don't know. Like, West Ham, I feel like we should have done slightly better against. I think we were probably the better side on the night and we lost. Sunderland, we... They were the better side, but we still did well. And Norwich, we finally got what we deserved from a game, which was lovely. So it's not been perfect. There's a few defeats in there, but I did a team talk, and they all sort of got back behind things, and things are looking better anyway. Um, so that's the main thing, basically. Things are looking slightly upwards for us. Now let's take a quick gander at the uh, squad. We did have a youth intake. Now... Well, I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, Fabio and Loveridge have the top scorers for the team. Loveridge is the only one that really was consistently putting the goals in. If you actually look for the number of games he started, though, Murphy's done okay uh, in the games he has played, but a lot of substitute appearances have not yielded much from him. Uh, Assist-wise, Frankham has got a couple more, but still, his early season form, he's not been able to replicate. As for the last few matches, it, it's more likely... Yeah, it's Thomas Kovarik with a 7.32 because Loveridge hasn't played. Um, unfortunately, the real problem is going to be... In fact, look, Lyle Taylor, 6.5. He's been shocking as of late. He really, really is. And I think the problem is just that we don't have good enough strikers for this level. And that's something we really are going to have to look into in the summer. But it's very difficult. I'm scouting players. We've got about 1,300 players now counted as scouted uh, on my scouted list, so to speak. So we can have a look through those. I'm hoping to get a few more in. Um, but the point is, striker is where we're going to need to look for. Of course, I'll still be looking for the youngsters because that's just what I do. But the most important thing for me now is to get some really top quality players coming in. Now, one of the players that came through our youth academy this year is Blaine Harris. No relation to Tony, I hope, but there you go. That's the sort of the best prospect from it, so to speak. Um, so there we go. Now, uh, we may as well just jump straight. Oh, we're going to do a question of the day, of course. Question of the day this week, um, this week, today, is going to be, um, what we got? Uh, oh yeah. What's the longest save you've ever done on YouTube or done in general, I think? Yeah. Yeah. So longest save I've ever done probably was my Outcast to Icon save last season, um, last season, last year, which was in the end, I think, 
Why is he down there? Oh, of course he's alone, isn't he? Um, which, yeah, which lasted until... I can't remember exactly which year. I think it was maybe 2028? I can't actually remember. I believe that was when it finished. Pompey was quite long, but not as long as that. I think that's my longest ever. Um, now, I feel like if we do do that other save idea that I'm going to do, which won't start, of course, until after Portsmouth, uh, so quite a long time down the line, that could end up possibly being the longest save ever because of the actual overall goal. It isn't just winning the Champions League, but to improve the league as a whole. That's going to be the aim of that one. But that, that will all do with that much closer to the time. Anyway, um, what's your longest save, guys? Do let me know in the comments and let me know who it was with, of course. And if you do have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Right, someone said to me, and I, this made sense to me at the time, and I've since kind of reversed my opinion on that, that perhaps not using the offside trap could be a good idea because a lot of our goals seem to come through the middle where our players have maybe failed to catch them offside and they've run through and scored. Now, the problem was I took the offside trap off uh, for the first two matches. Uh, oh, Jesus, we've got real problems here. It might have to be William Nightingale because Grandison, we're really lacking look with the suspensions to, you know, Johnny Byrne the injury to Ryan Sweeney, we're not uh, exactly full of defenders, defenders at the moment. That's another area I want to look into as well. But yeah, so I took it off. And the problem was, yes, we were the players were no longer stepping up trying to catch them offside, but they still weren't tracking the runners, even though we had them set to man mark. So a little bit annoying. And it just meant that we conceded more goals, uh, if anything. So I think the best way to counteract it is still to have the offside trap. Yes, occasionally someone will break it, but at least they're not constantly bombing through. That seems to be the best way to go about it. Uh, Loveridge is back, but I don't think he can start, not with that level of match fitness. I'm actually going to start Colin Murphy today because Taylor has been so bad over these last few matches and I just want to give Murphy a chance frankly I, I really really do Nightingale's going to have to play with that which is annoying but what can you do and we're going to jump straight into the match I know he's struggling to see the match out but we've just got such a threadbare squad and I think that's probably contributed to our sort of downfall in the league but that's fine you know the fact is we've done enough to stay up and I feel like we've done enough to stay up 51 points at this stage I think we should be fine um all right go on let's have a bit of an upset Leeds away Leeds are doing very well they're in the playoff spots in fifth place I think um so it's going to be crazy difficult for us it really really is something else I wanted to quickly mention yeah Someone said to do like a what the f uh, what the fudge like montage that I kind of do at some point. And maybe I will when I look back through stuff and maybe make one at some point. But it's going to be difficult because it means I have to watch through all the videos, which could take quite some time. But I'm sure I can do something like that at some point. Maybe at the end of the save, I uh, will sort of put a, a montage together or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's an idea. Um, someone also asked me in the comments the other day if I was a listener of the Football Ramble. Yes, yes, I've, yes, I am. I do drop references in every now and then. If you are a listener, of the, if you're a rambler, then, you know, just write something in the comments so I'll know. Because um, I know there's quite a lot of you out there. We've actually started this game quite well. Oh. But again, as you can see, they almost immediately drop down to like sixes and six. Our strikers just have such poor ratings for a lot of the time. And I think that's partly due to the fact they're not getting a lot of chances. And they're just not that good. Fabio, you know, he can be good one day, but he's not there yet. Um, I don't believe we've not managed to win the ball from this situation. That's disappointing. Doran. Oh, what a save that is from Bachmann. Um, he's not been that great this month, but... He still made some decent saves here and there. We're, we're probably still... Oh, wait, no, we're away from home. <laughs> I'm an Egypt. Right, well, basically, um, we'll mess around with things when we get the chance. Fabio's been shoved off by Palmer there, which is poor. Hmm. We've got more possession. The pass completion is solid. What about crosses? How are we doing for crosses? We're actually completing a few crosses, which is nice. So that might be an area we can try to exploit. Uh, Valinda and I have been bringing off a lot of time at half-time, depending on how the games have been going, because I've found that... Go on, slip it through. Murphy's in here. Colin Murphy scores! There we go, and he's onside. Leeds United nil. Wimbledon one. Colin Murphy starting his first game in quite some time. I've preferred him to Lyle Taylor because, you know, Lyle Taylor is just... Uh, I don't know, Lyle. Fact is, though, Lyle Taylor is a League 2 striker who we've been getting goals out of in the Championship for... A reasonable amount so i'm i'm pretty pleased with his overall i just think that there's a limit to how far he can take us colin murphy however my scout reckons has got the chance to be a decent premier league forward so that to me means that there's enough potential in him for him to rise at this level and take us up potentially with him and maybe even be able to use him in the premier league that's what i'm looking at from him back post cleared away mckay steven oh don't come and close him down what are you doing son that was really stupid i don't know why they did that we're playing an offside trap but there's no point in trying to catch someone offside there Ooh, all the way across the box. That was right through the corridor of uncertainty. Don't let them get a shot in from here. This is goal, isn't it? Oh, and Johnny Russell has been offside twice today. Um, they've been offside four times so far. I'm pretty certain that our offside stats were pretty shocking from the last matches. Admittedly, those offsides were not to do with, um, well, those two that we've seen in this game. Certainly weren't to do with our offside trap, but it certainly felt, I feel like it helps overall. So something I've started doing is having these ones on by default, basically. So we can see where the crosses are coming from. They've completed a lot of crosses, have we? two okay so where are they most successful they're completing crosses from both sides um number 12 on this side number 14 on this side so let's see who have we intercepted from the most 
interestingly on that side and one each out of play so that doesn't really help us at all really does it they've had the one half chance and that is it um which came from the edge of the box heat map wise there's a little bit of a gap down this side their fullback doesn't seem to be pushing forward as much so perhaps they've had a lot of corners too um how are we doing as well it's important to look at our own heat map so look at that this is from playing out of the back and that it just seems to be where we seem to have players there's a little bit of a gap here which is interesting um so that's that's interesting okay so what changes can we make to go forward in the second half perhaps maybe attack down that left hand side a little bit more since they're quite narrow and they seem to be leaving a bit of space there but also um Belinden's getting up the pitch nicely which is fine but i think that's about the only change i want to make so far um there's no obvious sort of hmm we'll just see if the assistant's got any ideas okay we'll go with that for now um what's happened in a lot of these games so far this month particularly in the norwich game was that Belinden wasn't doing much of a defensive duty, so the crosses that were being completed and getting those crosses in was all coming down his wing, which meant that I actually got Frankham on because of that better defensive ability, particularly when we took the lead, and I felt that it just sort of shored us up a little bit. Fabio was not winning any headers today, which is a bit poor. Um, Zielinski is winning some tackles. We've been really, really lucky to be in front here. But leads have been very, very good today. There's no denying that. Uh, we are very lucky to have the lead at the moment, but I don't know if it's going to last. Just don't let them run between the lines. That's where I really worry. Doran through, and it's a poor finish from him in the end. Difficult one, though. Um, these look decent. How do we try and stop this? I'm really trying to find a way to limit their play. They're getting a lot more key passes in the second half already, I've noticed. So let's just take a little look at who's making the passes. Um, now that we've looked at the sort of overall map of things. Wow, okay, so Mackay Steel... Well, they've, have they made three substitutions already? Okay, so... Hmm. None of those guys have really... Doing, they've probably just, just made the substitutions, which is a... I'm just going to hang off for another five, ten minutes and just see if they actually have that same level of fight about them. We've not made any fucking substitutions. That was outrageously stupid of me. Um, it is going to be Nightingale because Anderson's playing well. I'm also going to get off Kavarik for Barcham, and we're going to get Valinden off for George Frankham, just because Frankham's got that better defensive mind, and we could probably use that coming into the final few minutes. Uh, the reason I didn't decide to make those changes is because there's... Oh, that must be offside. Oh, he's offside again. Johnny Russell. He's just the lurker. Um... The main reason I didn't make the changes then was because they brought off a lot of the players that were creating the passes for them. I just wondered if we held off a little bit. Bloody hell. If we held off, maybe the players they brought on weren't going to be quite as proficient in those roles. So maybe we'd be able to get away with not marking them up as tightly. Grandison? Oh, we're going to end up conceding an equaliser, I can just tell. But that'll be our fuck... Oh, apologies for my language. Um... This would be an absolute smash and grab job if we were to do it, but it would be a brilliant one. Um... I'm actually just content to just let it sit at this point. If we were to sneak a 1-0 win at Ellen Road, you know, back-to-back -back wins, this one is probably our biggest lucky win of the season. And it makes up for the sort of poorer result against West Ham, where we were probably the... I thought that was going to be a penalty then. And there we go. Leeds United nil, Wimbledon 1. We've mugged them off there. I'm fully able to admit that we've completely... I mean, I'll give the players some confidence there, and they've really pushed on through there. But Colin Murphy has just won us the game, and that should be enough to keep us in this league now. It's 11 points clear, uh, and frankly, we're now starting to head up the league again. We really do seem to bounce around quite a bit. We've got some games in hand on the likes of West Ham and Bristol City, which could see us as high as 11th, and um, the giraffe onesie edges ever closer, actually. Um, I don't think that we're going to finish in the top half still, but we're doing a good job so far, and I'm pleased with it. Now, because we've got um, seven matches left, or is it eight? Eight matches left. I'm probably going to break it down into two Two episodes because it's going to be double upload so that's tomorrow so you'll get half of them at uh probably three it depends on when the fixtures are to be honest and half of them in the evening so let's just have a little look um i decided though someone said they wanted to see the wolves game so the wolves game will actually be the live come in the next episode uh, we will only do sheffield united and barnsley but because it's double upload day it shouldn't matter because you'll see the next the rest of the games in the evening anyway so it really doesn't matter how much i split them up uh really so there you go we're gonna do wolves away no wolves at home that should be a good one actually and then of course derby county at home on the final day we went through a really tough patch i mean leicester were a good side you know top of the league i think west ham were up there as well sunderland doing decent as well so and then good results so next up we've got sheffield united at home they've improved but still barnsley away is going to be crazy difficult but then wolves at home you never know wigan away aren't doing so well hull will be tough blackburn at home is difficult but then we've got rotherham and derby away to finish the season there could be some points in that so anyway guys if you have enjoyed this uh video please do drop a like on the video that'd be fantastic if we could get to 400 that'd be even better we've been doing so well on that lately i've been really impressed uh by 
the, the sheer numbers on the videos. It's been fantastic. It really has been amazing. And uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, hopefully, in your inbox every single day at 7 o'clock, except on weekends when it may well be double uploads for the foreseeable future. Um, and I will see you guys in the next episode for a game against Wolverhampton Wanderers, where hopefully we can finish off the season with a bit more of a flourish. And you never know where we'll finish. You just never know. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.